Uh, welcome to the third and final installment of the uh, NERS Algebra 2 Chapter 8 practice test. Um, in this final piece, we will be looking at these four equations and solving them. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with number 14. So looking at this problem, the first thing we want to do is try to find the least common denominator. Uh, in this case, we don't have to factor any of the denominators. Uh, the denominators we're looking at are 12, 6, and 6. Now, again, the key with finding least common denominators is that the least common denominator is really the lowest or least common multiple of the denominators. When we have denominators like 6 and 12, we can think of the multiples of 6 and 12. Um, you know, the multiples of 6 would be like 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, uh, and so on. Uh, multiples of 12 would be 12, 24, 36, 48, and so on. So we're looking for the lowest multiple that they both have in common. So again, if we look at multiples of 6, we got like 6, 12, 18, 24, and so on. Multiples of 12 would be 12, 24, 36, and so on. So the one number, or the lowest number, that appears on both would be 12. You also notice thing in that uh, 24 appears on both, but the lowest common multiple for 12 and 6 is 12, and so that becomes our, or that really is our LCD. We we kind of figure that out. Now, what we end up doing with that LCD, the reason we pick that number to use, is because now if I take the equation that we have and look at the denominators, the 12 will cover all of the factors of those denominators. And so we'll be able to cancel all of those out. So if we multiply both sides of the equation by 12, then all of those denominators will go away. There are a few different ways that we can look at this. One of the longer ways I can kind of draw this out so that you can hopefully see a little bit better about what's going on there is to show actually multiplying the 12 by the 3x minus 2 over the 12, and then the 12 times the 1 over the 6, and the 1 times the 12 over the 6. Now, uh, and again, this isn't the only way that you could do this, um, but it is one of the uh, most effective ways, and it's also easily applied to uh, really any type of equation, no matter what you have. Now, when we have uh, this situation over here, the 12s just um, go ahead and they cancel each other out because they match up perfectly. So we're left with a 3x minus 2. Now, in the next piece here, uh, 12 times 1 would be 12, but then 12 divided by 6 is 2. And then we get the same thing on the other side. Really, it's uh, 12 over 6, which is 2. So again, the key there that all of those uh, factors in the denominator all get canceled out. Now, we have a little work to do to simplify the left side before we're really to go about solving this equation. Uh, simplifying that, we'd have 3x minus 4 equals 2. We'd want to add 4 to both sides. And we get 3x equals 6. Divide by 3. And we find out that x equals 2. Now we do want to again take a look at our LCD, although our LCD didn't contain any variables, um, but really then uh, making sure that x equals 2 is not extraneous. So it works out just fine. And so that is our one solution that we have for this uh, equation. Moving on to number 15, uh, same sort of process. We identify what the LCD is. Uh, in this case, we don't have any factoring to do, but we do get some variable expressions included in the LCD this time, so the x plus 1 and the x minus 2. So we multiply both sides of the equation by that. We have our x over x plus 1 plus the x over x minus 2, and that equals the 2. One thing I like to do as well, especially in this case, notice how the 2 doesn't have any factors that will cancel out, uh, no factors in its denominator that will cancel out the x plus 1 or the x minus 2. So I like to figure out, well, what, is, what do I have if I just multiply the x plus 1 by x minus 2? And whether you box that or foil it, um, however you find that product, 
Uh, we should be coming up with x squared minus x minus 2 for the product of those two binomials. And that'll be handy, making it easier to simplify the right side there. Um, same approach as before. So again, our approach doesn't change even though our denominator is a bit different. We still multiply both sides by that LCD, in this case x plus 1 times x minus 2. Um, in this case, I might actually write this out not as the x plus 1, x minus 2, but as the x squared minus x minus 2. Uh, again, that'll be a little easier to just distribute the 2 across there. Uh, and you're much more likely to be successful uh, handling it that way. On the left side, again, rather than draw out the full um, kind of process the way I did on number 14, what I look at here, when I distribute the x plus 1, x minus 2 to the x over x plus 1, I can tell and see that the x plus 1s will cancel out. So the x will just be multiplied by x minus 2. Likewise, when I distribute the LCD to x over x minus 2, I can see that the x minus 2s would cancel, and so we're left with x times x plus 1. So uh, a bit faster and cleaner way to take care of that once you realize that those factors in the denominator will be uh, canceled out by multiplying by that LCD. Now we still need to figure out our products there. We want to figure out the x times x minus 2. Uh, so that would give us x squared minus 2x plus an x squared plus x. Uh, and that's still going to equal our 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. Now it's, it might be a bit tempting to start doing operations to both sides, but again, I would warn against that. That's uh, when people start to make mistakes generally. So we're going to clean up the left-hand side first. Uh, we've got an x squared and an x squared, so that would give us 2x squared. We have a minus 2x and a plus x, so that'll be a minus x and then that will equal 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. Um, at this point, notice that we have a, a 2x squared on each side of the equation, so if we subtract a 2x squared, those will cancel out. We'll get a negative x equals negative 2x minus 4. Since it's just a linear equation at this point, we would want to isolate the x terms from the constant term, so adding 2x to both sides would uh, start to accomplish that, and that would leave us with just a positive x equals a negative 4. So that appears to be the solution we have. Um, looking at our denominators, we would be in trouble if x were negative 1 or a positive 2. Um, since it didn't come up, we don't really have to worry about it, but again, I wanted to bring it up so that we make sure that we're thinking about it just in case that happens. And again, coming up with an x equals negative 4, uh, the issue would be if we had an x plus 4, uh, as a factor in the denominator, then that negative 4 would be extraneous. But in this uh, case, we're okay. All right, moving on to number 16. Now, 16 is a bit of a special case. Uh, in the case of an equation where you have just a fraction equals another fraction, this is a time where you can just cross-multiply. Now, cross-multiplication really has the same effect as identifying what the LCD would be. In this case, uh, 2 times the factor x plus 3, uh, and then multiplying both sides by that. On the left side, when we do that, the x plus 3s would get canceled. Again, this factor in the denominator would cancel out the x plus 3 here, so the 2 would really just get multiplied by the 2. And on the right side, the x minus 3 over 2 this 2 would cancel out the 2 there in that LCD, and we would have just the x minus 3 multiplied by the x plus 3. Um, so again, you can kind of see whether you decide to cross multiply or just multiply both sides by the LCD, you really get the same thing. And again, what makes this possible to cross multiply here is it's just a fraction equals a fraction. On the previous two problems, that would not have worked because uh, we have not just a fraction on the side, we have a fraction minus a fraction. Likewise, here we had a fraction plus a fraction. So those would not have fit this process. Um, a different way to do these problems is to uh, do the adding or subtracting to get the equation to look like we have here in 16 and then cross multiply. Um, 
which again is another good choice. Um, so if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. Um, but we'll just continue our work from here. Simplify the left side, we get 4. Now hopefully you can see something like an x minus 3 times x plus 3. Um, that's that sum and difference pattern. That just ends up being x squared minus 9. What happens is we get, uh, of course, our x squared term. But then we get a plus 3x and a minus 3x, so those cancel out. Then we get the minus 9 there. Now it might be tempting to um, try to factor that, but that would just get us back to where we were. Um, now what we can do is... Uh, just isolate this x squared term. And again, this doesn't really have anything to do with the cross multiplication being um, a possibility. It just happens to be how this one worked out. And we get 13 equals an x squared. So when we square up both sides, uh, then we'll get the x by itself. Now, the one thing that you have to remember when you square up both sides like that really as soon as you do that you have to have the positive and negative. So there really appear to be two solutions here positive and negative square root of 13. Now with our denominator of the 2 times x plus 3 here um, our extraneous solution would be negative 3. So certainly no problem with a positive and negative square root of 13. Uh, so really we have two solutions, again, a square root of 13 and a negative square root of 13 there. All right, and then we have our final question. Um, again, I'm going to continue using the process of identifying the LCD, which in this case would be 2y, and then really multiplying both sides of the equation by the 2y. Now, the right side is the simple one in this case because its denominator is 2y, so when I multiply by that, we just get 5. The left side, again, being a sum of two terms, uh, I have to distribute the 2y to both. Uh, and it gets a little bit weird looking with the first one because it's a 2 over a y. Um, but again, what happens is we have a y on top and a y on bottom, so we end up with the 2 multiplying the 2, and the half the 2's end up canceling out, and we just get a y times a 1, so really just a y. So 4 plus y equals 5. It's really just a linear equation, so we subtract the 4 from both sides, and we end up with y equals 1. Uh, the extraneous solution would be 0. y can't be 0. Um, again, doesn't really come into play here because we come up with a solution of 1 for this one. So um, hopefully this helped with um, solving these rational equations. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.